A very good evening to all our viewers. This is Beyond Wallet. I am Sumit Chaturvedi. Let's go straight to our top headlines. Call it Beijing's new economic diplomacy, heads of 29 states and government and representatives from more than 130 nations will attend the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in Beijing this week in the next two, three days. Big merger imminent in Indian e-commerce space, Japan SoftBank has finally secured the crucial nod from co-investor Nexus Venture Partners for sale of Snapdeal to Flipkart. Indian Defence Ministry is all set to rope in private players for mega military production orders. It has come up with a list of criteria that private sector must fulfil. It will ease the doing of business in India. And we will tell you why auction of one of the world's largest diamond has failed after Sierra Leone government rejected the bid. And why did they reject the bid? Now to our top story, airlines in US are preparing for an anticipated widening of US ban on bringing laptops and other large electronic devices on both planes bound for American airports. Now officials from United Airlines, American Airlines, Delta Airlines and industry trade group are meeting to, uh, with Department of Homeland Security Secretary very soon in Washington to discuss details of a possible expansion of this ban. Air France, KLM Group and Toshi Lufthansa are among carriers to say they are making separations for the moratorium of devices. Now, including uh, these devices include tablets, games, consoles. This is to be expanded, the ban to be expanded to their European hubs after initially targeting Mid East and African airports. Now, European Commission has written to President Donald Trump's administration to urge cooperation on any new measures. Lufthansa has been working internally on different scenarios for responding to any extension of the band too. Now to our biggest story of the day, the heads of 29 states and government and representatives from more than 130 nations will attend the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in Beijing on May 14 and 15, which is Sunday and Monday. Now this is big diplomacy coming from China. It is economic diplomacy actually. Beijing is calling everyone. Take a look at this story. China is one of few countries in the world today with money to spend and President Xi Jinping is ready to write some checks. China's president will host almost 30 world leaders in Beijing on Sunday at the first Belt and Road Forum. More than 100 countries from five continents have signed up. In an effort to increase its influence in Asia, China is already spending more than $50 billion on an economic corridor in Pakistan, a port in Djibouti and a network of oil pipelines in Central Asia, infrastructure that could challenge traditional powers. With more than $3 trillion in international reserves, China has more resources than developed economies. China could pour more than $500 billion into 62 countries over the next five years. China's state-run companies like China National Petroleum Corporation and China Mobile Limited, the world's largest wireless carrier, are positioned to reap the rewards. The Belt and Road Initiative is China's alternative to the US version of globalization. It's globalization paved by concrete and connected through railways, highways, pipelines and ports. But China's slowing economic growth has left it with fewer resources to spend overseas. Its international reserves have fallen about 6% over the past year. And China needs a healthy amount to defend the yuan. Some previous Chinese ventures abroad have also turned sour. China's no-strings-attached approach to investment is welcomed by developing countries, but these countries often have poor credit ratings and questionable governance. 
China has struggled to recoup loans in Venezuela and Africa, and several projects in Central Asia have spurred protests. Currently, One Belt, One Road is little more than a marketing slogan. Leaders of the world's top economies like Donald Trump, Angela Merkel and Shinzo Abe are staying away. India's aversion to a war is well known, seeing it as a move by China to strategically control and dominate. Pure Report, Vion. And staying with the global news where South Korea has ordered the recall of 240,000 Hyundai and Kia vehicles after five safety defects were flagged by a whistleblower last year. The 12 affected models include Elantra, Sonata, Santa Fe, Genesis and one more model, South Korean Transport Ministry has ordered investigation to find out whether automakers covered up the defects. If conducted, the recalls will add to 1.5 million vehicles that Hyundai and Kia last month offered to recall in South Korea and the US over possible engine stalling. And staying with the auto space where Nissan Motor Company has forecast a surprise drop in annual profit on expectations for higher raw material costs and a stronger yen and as competition increases in the US and China. Now operating profit of Nissan will fall 7.7 percent to 685 billion yen or 6 billion dollar in the fiscal year through March compared with average of around 775 billion yen last year. The Yokohama based company said while deliveries in China are projected to increase, vehicle sales in the U.S. are expected to be flat. Nissan boosted its global market share to 6.1% from 5.8% during the six-year period ended March and maintained an aim to achieve an operating profit margin of 8% in the next midterm plan. Now, automakers' performance in China will be key to achieving its global market share goal, with Nissan seeking to strengthen its Venezuela brand to stave off competition from local marquees. Now the auction of one of the world's largest diamond has failed after the Sierra Leone government rejected the highest bid of over 7.8 million dollars. The 706 carat diamond was up for auction in the capital city of Freetown. Now auctioneers received five bids ranging from two million dollars to 7.8 million dollars, the highest made by a Belgium diamond dealer but the government hopes to get more for the stone with international auction. The diamond was unearthed in March in eastern Kono region by Christian Pasteur. It is being touted as the second largest diamond ever discovered in Sierra Leone. Now to our biggest Indian story today, where Snap co-founders, uh, pardon me, it's global story, Snap co-founders Ivan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy lost more than $1 billion each after company reported earnings for the first time this week. Now shares fell 25% to a low of $17.2 before rebounding slightly when social media company reported first quarter revenue that was below analyst estimates. Now Snap said it's Snapchat Snapchat app added fewer users than projected and business is struggling to expand its audience as Facebook copies its most popular features. Spiegel and Murphy each had a net worth of more than $5 billion at the close of trading. Now, telecom giant British Telecom has announced it will be axing 4,000 shops worldwide over the next two years and cutting senior figures pay packages too. Now, reduction of staff will be part of a restructuring of its global services unit. The jobs to be axed will be back office and managerial roles. The announcement was made following fourth quarter results which saw pre-tax profit fall to 19% to £440 million. Revenue came in at £6.1 billion versus £5.5 billion in the same period last year. Now, an accounting scandal at the Italian part of global services had dropped the business of BT with reports that it could cost BT more than £500 million. Now, BT boss Kevin Patterson has been stripped off his annual bonus following disclosures of an accounting scandal at the telecom giant's Italian division.
Now, our biggest Indian story is of the story of the day, which is Japan SoftBank has finally secured the crucial nod from co-investor Nexus Venture Partners or NVP for sale of Snapdeal to India's largest e-commerce firm Flipkart. Now, Snapdeal was valued at 6.5 billion in its last funding round in February 2016. Well, the valuation, however, well, has shrunk since, and the potential deal could see the embattled e-commerce firm being valued at just one billion dollar. Now, SoftBank, the largest shareholder in Snapdeal, had secured a go-ahead from founders and Kalari Capital last month. However, NVP or Nexus Venture Partner was not in agreement over the valuation suggested by the Japanese firm and hectic parleys were held over the last few weeks to resolve the impasse. According to people familiar with the matter, SoftBank Group has now reached an agreement with NVP to move ahead with the sale plan. To talk more on this issue, we are joined by our in-house expert and Bangalore correspondent Nishita Virendra for more on this. Well, good to have you, uh, Nishita, on this. Well, uh, thank you, Sumit. Uh, well, certainly... Yeah. First of all, I would like to know from your side, what is leading to this kind of consolidation in Indian e-commerce space and how will it impact the other players in the market too? Well, it is multiple factors if we have to consider. First of all, uh, the the what what many experts have really termed as the bubble of startup is uh, popping in India because you're not used to utilizing the initial capital that you're receiving uh, in a smart way. And that is what is happening to most startups in India. And same is the case uh, with something like Snapdeal. It was evaluated at $6.5 billion last year in February. And by the end of the year, it has dipped to almost $1 billion. So it goes on to say a story in itself and uh, on the other hand the other story that uh, which is the positive side of this entire development is that Flipkart, eBay and Snapdeal have come together now which means that they form a formidable force to uh, face something like the Amazon. Flipkart has been struggling to compete with Amazon uh, because Amazon has conveniently set aside almost five billion dollars for India because they're looking at India as becoming the biggest market in the next 10 years but at the same time on the other hand Flipkart has so far uh, it's almost mid-year now and Flipkart has raised barely about a billion and a half. Their target is two billion for the rest of the year. Uh, so bringing Snapdeal on board, which means that they will have presence in the northern part of India better. They will have more accessibility in the northern and eastern part of India. Then you have the eBay India on board as well, which means that you have on, you you brought in almost five hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so these three e-commerce conglomerates uh -huh. getting together uh, certainly will make the e-commerce competition extremely exciting in India in the coming days. Which means that all anti-Amazon forces are backing now Flipkart. In a way, the fight is going to be interesting, more interesting going forward. What does it hold for custu customers of these e-commerce space? Will there be more discounts going forward from the sides of these uh, you know, giants or will there be lesser discounts because once Snapdeal and Flipkart, they join hands, of course they are not rivals and there will be lesser discounts. So what's your assessment? Will there be more discounts going forward? or less discounts? Well, discounts could just be the way forward because uh, we know how Amazon works. We know uh, Amazon is extremely superior when it comes to technology. Amazon is superior when it comes to its deals. Uh, we recently uh, have uh, come across reports where Amazon has been uh, bringing in newer technology to not allow any of its competitors to even look at what its pricing looks like. And this is not in India, this is in the US. So we might see Amazon upping the ante because Amazon is also anticipating some stiff competition and it does not want to let go of Indian market. It knows that US and UK and Europe is a fairly saturated market as far as e-commerce goes, but India is a huge e-commerce consumer base and uh, the numbers will only grow. Our internet penetration is not as big as our population and we will see that only grow uh, bigger uh, with uh, companies like uh, Geo offering free internet service. You are seeing the e-commerce space only become bigger in India. So on the other hand, Flipkart will need to keep the competition stiff. Of course, there won't be any mindless spending is what we assume. They're down sizing their staff, they're going for smaller office spaces, but at the same time money will be spent in a smarter way because they, we hope at least, have learned their lessons. And what about the mom and pop retail stores because uh, they would be watching us also. What holds there for them? Would they, should they be happy about this news or sad about this news? What holds for them in future? Well, the mom and pop stores have particularly not been happy about e-commerce at all. Uh, if we do look at the traditional markets, they have seen a steep uh, a, a, a downward fall as far as their uh, services goes, as far as their uh, business goes, especially the electronic stores. If you if you don't look at the other sectors of e-commerce, whether it's if it's not the groceries or if it's not the departmental stores, that if you look at electronics, you will see a definite pinch. If you look at the bookstores, you will see a definite pinch. So for them, e-commerce particularly has not been great news, and if the competition 
competition is going to get stiff if it is going to be Indian e-commerce site versus the foreign sites that are coming in Alibaba or the already established Amazon then uh, and if the discounts are going to get bigger and if uh, your deals are going to get better for the consumer uh, then certainly it is a big hit for the mom and pop stores and they will not be a happy lot at all and last question to you would be uh, because uh, e-commerce space was you know in the recent past the first choice of any out of the college kid or you know being the being the good employers mm -hmm. what about the employees now you know in any of these consolidations we have seen people being fired do you expect more firings or more pink slips to be given to employees in this consolidation as well well, I, I, as I started off uh, in today's uh, discussion, there were several mistakes made. Okay, let's talk about Flipkart. There were several mistakes made in the way that they used their initial capital, something that uh, brand managers and brand experts have constantly pointed out. Indian startup culture, of course, is something that has gained mm -hmm. world attention, but mm -hmm. at the same time, the way it is dealing uh, with these startups, most of the time, the startups are made just to sell and make some money. There is no real intention behind a company to go ahead and become something big, and that is is the mistake that has been pointed out time and again and something like Flipkart uh, as soon as it got the initial investment as soon as the Flipkart boom happened and it became uh, a household name you saw it hiring uh, extensively from some of the top schools not just B schools but otherwise as well from some of the top tech schools too and you uh, saw them splurging on uh, employee uh, on employees as well as on discounts as well as on uh, your office spaces and real estate but yes Henceforth, uh, there will be limited hiring is what we can uh, expect, at least for the next few years, until uh, Flipkart learns how to compete with Amazon, which has still uh, got double uh, the funding than Flipkart, which has still got double the money than mm -hmm. Flipkart for this year. So yes, the money that they have should be spent very wisely. And another factor that will play uh, a crucial role is it's joining hands with Microsoft, because Microsoft Cloud will be joining with Flipkart, and uh, that will play a crucial role in competing with the technology that Amazon brings with it. Thank you so much Nishita for talking to us and getting us all these details. So as we were talking to Nishita, the Snapdeal and Flipkart uh, is the biggest story of the day currently uh, as far as Indian markets are concerned, Indian markets, uh, Indian e-commerce market is concerned. Now uh, apart from that there are other things happening in Indian e-commerce market but yes overall the market has been divided into two. Uh, we can say that forces first is Amazon and all the second is all anti-Amazon forces now moving on from here and we move on to now another IT company story which is SoftBank which is SoftBank group is close to announcing commitments of as much as 95 billion dollar for its tech fund people familiar with the matter have said that the fundraising close might be announced as soon as next week now chief executive officer Masayoshi Sons investment pool has attracted interest from Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Fund 2, which said it would consider putting in as much as $45 billion, as well as tech giants such as Apple and Qualcomm, which have also said they will participate. Well, Abu Dhabi's Mubadla Development Company is also considering committing as much as $15 billion. Well, also, previously SoftBank had planned to contribute at least $25 billion of its own capital in the next five years, as well as the Japanese company announced plans for Vision Fund last year aimed to create vehicle that would become one of the biggest technology investor over the next decade. Now SoftBank has agreed to spend more than 30 billion dollar on tech companies itself in the last 12 months. And the defense ministry in India is all set to rope in private players for mega military orders. It has come up with a list of criteria that private sector must fulfill. Now, Defence Minister Arun Jaitley yesterday held extensive talks with key stakeholders to finalise the much-awaited strategic partnership model for roping in private firms to produce critical military platforms like fighter jets and submarines in India. The meeting was attended by representatives of defence arms of leading groups including Larson and Dubro, Ashok Leland, Mahindra and Mahindra, Reliance Infra, Tata Group, Punj Lloyd, Adani Group and Bharat Forge. Now, industry bodies CII, FIKI and PhD Chamber of Commerce were also part of talks besides top officials of Defence Ministry. Now, under the strategic partnership model, select private Indian defence firms will be allowed to exclusively make various military platforms for a specified period of time. There has been a debate over whether to select only one private sector company for each of these segments identified for defence, indigenization or look for other options too.
Terza destra. With this, it is time for a short break on Vion Wallet. After the break, we will continue with our coverage of market segment and other news stories too. Stay tuned to Vion. Now welcome back to Beyond Wallet after the break. Now straight to our market segment where after registering pumper growth for the last two days, Indian markets have uh, ended in red. We can see that Sensex was down by around 62 points while Nifty was down by around 21 points. So that's how the markets behave today. Remember markets were doing very well in the last two days. So today, primary reason for this was the profit booking that was happening throughout the counters because of which we saw markets, Indian markets coming down. Asian markets, if you see, Nikkei was down by 0.39%, while Hang Seng was down by 0.12%. That's how Asian markets fared today. Really, uh, the clearly Sensex and Nifty were in red, but Asian markets are trading. Clear, so they were trading. We can say that mix. So to talk more on markets, we are joined by our guest for today, Savitri Singh. Well, thanks for talking to us. First of all, Savitri, we would like to know from your side, uh, what is your assessment which side the market will markets will move next week do you think will they will start once start uh, again the upward journey beginning monday uh, thank you so much sumit for inviting me uh, first of all uh, from last two days we have witnessed the profit taking at different counters especially for the banking uh, but uh, it was more like uh, we were taking the cautious stance before the release of industrial uh, india industrial production data as well as inflation data as we we know that inflation data has come better than expected because of the low base effect and the better commodity prices like declining the commodity prices in the past so it's like it is uh, i believe it will give a positive sentiment for the Monday markets giving a positive signal as new series has started. It is giving a cheer to the new series also. And but we would like to wait another data that is industrial production that is that will show the more uh, uh, color to the Indian economy how the economy is going to turn. And further from last three four session we have uh, showcased that the FI has taken the positive interest again. They have taken the flight back to the Indian markets. They have been starting pumping money in the Indian market. That's also the positive segment uh, sentiments we can see. And other than that. Uh, in the next week, there's a GST council meeting. Uh, they will be meeting on 18th of May to 18th and 19th of May to decide that uh, taxes, different tax structure. So the next week, there are so many things are going to be taken place, and it, and further, there are corporate results are also awaited. So these things are giving a positive picture as of now, as we have seen the most of the companies have uh, uh, reported better than expected results. So I believe from if. If I see from that point of view, I believe the market is going to touch higher highs in the immediate terms, but definitely profit taking would happen in meanwhile. And Savitri, in this bull scenario, when do you see markets touching and making new highs as far as Sensex touching 39,000 or 40,000 mark is concerned, or let's say 35,000 mark is concerned, and Nifty touching, we can say that 10,000, 15,000 mark is concerned. 
Uh, yeah, not immediately. Uh, we can uh, see that market touching some ten thousand five hundred or forty thousand cent six. But yeah, we can see uh, if uh, if we talk about the financial or next financial, we can see market touching somewhere that. But uh, we don't think it's concerning because the market is driven by the stable government uh, positivity which uh, we are getting from the Modi government. So many things are happening. It's not just. the market is moving market is the cl- uh, com- uh, clear reflection of the economy it's like whatever happening outside we are getting to see in the indian market so we are getting support at different level so many reforms are coming so many stability is the government side are coming so many things are coming we are ready to wait for the fis so things are current and uh, uh, economic uh, current is also turning in the brighter way so it's like we are getting support at every level it's not just momentum by it's the sustained buying which are we are happening we are able to see Uh, and so with three overall in this kind of uh, you know market any sector specific suggestion you would give any sectors which in which there is still steam left where people still can make good money as far as this market bull run is concerned Uh, yeah, so I would like to advise the mark, uh, investors to put money in the realty sector as the government has uh, given more uh, emphasis on the transparency, which was not there earlier in the realty sector. So once it will be transparent, people will be more willing to come ahead to put their money because they can see the structure, how it is happening. Because earlier the concern with the realty was that they were not able to know exactly what's happening, why were projects are getting delayed. Now the thing is they are getting more structured with the real estate, so it will be getting more clarity, which will attract the more charm to the. Uh, investors and further we would like to advise the psu's bank where we are hardly we have though from since last 3 months we have showcased a good movement in the psu but not compared to other indices so i would advise to go with the psu's bank also because so many things are happening for the npa front so uh, rbi is there to take a watch how they are happening they are advising for the uh, responsible lending and responsible utilization of the capital so these things are going to add value for the psu's bank And one last question to you would be Savitri how do you see global markets panning out next week what are the likely in the movers and shakers over there uh for the global market i would say uh there is no much data awaited in the next week but yeah the donald trump the stuff uh, which he has taken in the past like the firing the fbi uh, was little these things doesn't take uh, in a proper manner to the street so it's like the market got hit even we have uh, so because of nasdaq so the, if these kind of action is going to come i don't believe the market global market is going to take it positively they may react negatively on that so but if we compare from the indian market definitely india is going to do much better than the global market Thank you so much for talking to us Savitri. So today we were talking to our guest Savitri on the issue of markets where Indian markets have ended in red today. Clearly there was profit booking after 2 to 3 days of continuous bull run in Indian markets with Sensex and Nifty touch records high. With this it is time to wrap up this segment of Vion for more news and updates stay tuned to Vion and thanks for watching us.